my name is Skylie Edmiston. I'm an aesthetics instructor at Tucson College of Beauty. We are going to be filming the Arizona Practical State Board Examination video. This will be our third video. Uh, we will show you all of the updated steps that have changed as of March 2018. We will now begin. Some things to keep in mind when you go to your state board examination. You will need to be in all black. You can wear scrubs. If you're going to wear a scrub top, you need to wear scrub bottoms as well. If you are just going to wear black professional dress, we do recommend that you wear a smock over your clothing when you're performing the examination. You also need closed-toed shoes. I'd recommend something comfortable that you can stand in for about an hour and a half. You want to make sure your hair is pulled back out of your face so it doesn't touch the mannequin or the table. You don't want any dangling jewelry that could touch the mannequin or table. Make sure you have no nail polish. Your fingernails need to be sport length and that you're not wearing any jewelry on your hands as well. Some things you will need for your examination. First, you're going to need a container for to be disinfected. You will also need a container for soiled linens and trash as well. I recommend actually using brown paper bags from the grocery store and putting plastic liners in them. They take up less space and you can put them in your kit for when you walk in. You can also use gift bags with plastic liners. For the purpose of this examination, I'm actually going to have these on the table off to the side so that you're able to see where I'm throwing things out at. But at your examination, you would want to put them under the table out of the way. So we'll have our linens and then we have our to be disinfected as well. And then you're going to have a box. It needs to have a lid on it so that you can keep it closed. This is your sanitary box where you pull from. You also have your mannequin, which you do need to put eyebrows on. You can use nail polish, Sharpie, whatever works for you, as long as they will stay on while you're cleaning the brows. You'll need your clamp and then all your kit items. So what we'll do is we'll put this down here, and then we will begin with our first step. The first step in the examination will be your setup and client protection. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section and they will inform you when you have 8 minutes remaining. They will let you know exactly what you need to do for setup. You will be setting up your mannequin and clamp, all of the supplies needed for the first client, as well as setting up for those services, which includes cleansing the face with product, exfoliating the face with product and an implement, as well as towel steaming, and massaging the face. You will also drape your mannequin as well. During this step, they will let you know when you can begin, and they'll let you know as well that when you're finished, you need to step back to indicate that you have finished. So we will begin this first step. You will go ahead, get in your box, the first thing you're going to remove from your box is going to be your citrus cleaner or your barbicide. They do need to be an original labeling and the actual real product. This is the one of two things that will actually be real product. You're going to spray the paper towel, not the table, and then you have to make sure that you wipe the entire table area that you're given. They will typically mark off your section with masking tape or some type of barrier so you know where your section begins and ends. Then you're going to put this on the table that will stay for the remainder of the examination. This is going to go in your trash. You're going to go in your kit, get your hand sanitizer, sanitize your hands, make sure that they can see your hand sanitizer and that this is also in an original labeled package and the real product. Then you can go ahead and get your bags out. For this section, you're going to need bags 1A and 1B. If you'd like to know exactly what goes in each bag, I do have a list created. You're more than welcome to email me at the address listed below in the video, and I can send you a supplies list. You're also going to need your mannequin and your clamp. I would recommend setting up your clamp and your mannequin first. Make sure that you put them on the table tight. The nice thing is, the mannequin is never considered sanitary, so if for some reason your mannequin falls on the floor during your examination, just pick it up and put it back on the table. Then I always sanitize before I go into my bags. I'm going to take out everything that I need. I recommend, especially if you have smaller bags, uh, trash bags and soiled linen, that you tie your Ziploc bags into a knot before you throw them away. It will take up less space that way. If you 
want, you can absolutely set up your mannequin and drape it before you pull everything out of this bag. I just like to get everything out and off the table that I don't need. You'll need your first aid kit. You do need two of everything in there for it to be considered a multi-use first aid kit. You're going to put your Sanic strip on your mannequin. You can tie it in the back. I recommend a hand towel to go around the base of your clamp so that if you need to wipe your hands, you can. Your headband, if you put it on from the bottom up, then that way if it does come off, it doesn't fly off the table, it gets caught on the clamp. And you can cover your mannequin's ears as well, which is really important. You do want some of the forehead exposed, but you don't need a ton. And then I recommend the small kids cutting capes or styling tape because they're easier to work with. If you need to, you can always clamp your drape onto the back of the mannequin clamp if it doesn't fit, but you definitely want it to be tight and then you can fold it under as well. You want to do whatever you can to conserve space because you don't have a lot of room. And then I will tighten my clamp so that my mannequin doesn't go anywhere. And then you want to make sure you have labels on both sides of your product because you should be able to see it as well as the examiner. They will not pick anything up to look at it. So if they can't automatically see it, they're going to assume that it's not labeled and that will be a mark off on the examination. Again, you have 15 minutes for this step, so just look over your table when you're done. Make sure that you have everything that you need. If at some point you realize you're missing something, you can go into your box and get an extra out if you have an extras bag. I do recommend having one with everything in it that you could possibly drop on the floor and not be able to clean. Once you have everything set up, sanitize your hands and step back. You will now perform cleansing the base with product. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section and you'll be informed when you have five minutes remaining. They will indicate when you can step up. So you'll step up, always sanitize your hands first. Then you're going to take two cotton rounds, put your makeup remover on them. You wanna make sure that your nozzle does not touch anything, including your hands or your cotton rounds. And then always close everything when you're finished with it. Place these on the eyes, and then what I do is I remove one at a time, going down and out, and then across on the brow. Then you're going to take another one, brace the mouth, and cleanse the lips. Then you're going to take your cleanser, emulsify it in your hands, apply it all over the mannequin. Try to avoid the eyes, the nostrils, and the mouth. And then you're just going to do some manipulations to, to cleanse the skin. Just try to remember they're looking for safety, sanitation. They don't want to see that you're dragging or pulling the skin, so you want to make sure that you have enough product that it looks wet on their face. And then you can grab your sponges. You could also use 4x4s if you wanted wet or if you really wanted to use a towel at this point you could, but I always recommend trying to keep things as simple as possible. I'm just going to wet my sponges a little extra. The whole purpose of the water on your table is to be able to wet things if you need to. And then you're going to remove the cleanser completely. If you get it on the drape or the headband, that's fine. That's what it's for.
And then I recommend putting these in the trash. You could put them in the soiled linens, but technically they're a one-time use sponge. Then you're going to take two cotton rounds. Take your toner. Tone the skin. You can spray the toner if you have a spray, but just make sure that you cover the mannequin's eyes before you do that. Sanitize your hands and step back. You will now perform exfoliating the face with product using an implement as well as towel steaming. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section and you'll be informed when you have five minutes remaining. They will indicate for you to step up. You're gonna sanitize your hands again. Take your exfoliating product. Apply it all over the face. Then I recommend one of these little facial brushes. I would wet it before you go ahead and get started because if you don't, it's going to absorb all of the product that's on the face and it may look like you are rubbing on dry skin. You're going to go ahead and do gentle circular motions, manipulating all over the face. Make sure it doesn't look like you are dragging or pulling the skin at all while you're doing this. you cover the entire face. When you're done with this, it will go into be disinfected. You can never over sanitize, so when in doubt, just go ahead and sanitize. Then for this step, you're actually going to use a wet steam towel to remove the product. Make sure you test the towel on your wrist. And then when you apply the towel, make sure that you're leaving at least the nose or the mouth uncovered or both. You can press it in if you want. And then you'll actually use this to remove the product. And this will go in soiled linens. I recommend toning the skin again. Sanitize your hands and then step back. You will now perform massaging the face. You will be expected to show four massage movements, petrissage, effleurage, chapotement, and friction. I recommend going through them all three separate times just to ensure that the examiner is able to see what you're doing. So you're gonna step up and sanitize your hands. Get your massage product. Make sure that you have enough that it does not look like you're dragging or pulling on the skin. Apply your product all over the face. And you can use any movements that fit the criteria, but I'll show you the ones that I recommend. First, you're gonna go ahead and do petrissage, so a kneading movement. So you can knead on the chin. Then you can show effleurage, the cheeks. And to Popeman. And then friction on the forehead. And then I recommend you slide back down and you do the same thing over again. That way if the examiner missed one movement the first time, hopefully they will see it the second. If not, they will see it the third time. And just remember, you do have 10 minutes for this section, so you can take your time. Don't go too quickly. 
The only thing you need to do is show the movements and then remove the massage cream. And you can go ahead and remove your excess massage product with your cellulose sponges. And I tone during this step just because I like to get in the habit of doing it after every step. Only two steps require you to tone, but rather than trying to remember which ones, if you just do it every time, they won't mark you off if it's not required, but then that way if it is required, you've fulfilled that. Sanitize your hands and step back. You will now have five minutes to break down the supplies used in the previous sections of this examination. During breakdown, you will take everything off of your mannequin as well as the products that you used in the previous steps. You will not do any setting up or disinfecting of your table at this point. So you'll step up, sanitize your hands again. I recommend taking these four products off the table, putting them in your to be disinfected, and then going ahead and undraping your mannequin. You're going to put your Sanix strip in the trash. You'll put your headband, your drape, and your hand towel into the soiled linens. And then I also recommend lifting your mannequin up so that when you are ready for setup, you can clean underneath the mannequin. You'll sanitize your hands and you'll step back. You will now set up for your second client. You will also set up the general supplies needed for the remainder of the examination, as well as draping your mannequin and setting out all products you will need for this section and cleaning your table as well. I would treat this just like you did the first setup. So go through the same disinfection procedures and the same setup. So you'll have 15 minutes again, and they'll inform you when you have eight minutes remaining. Step up and sanitize your hands. Then you may go in your kit if you need to and get another paper towel or hand towel. You can keep the paper towels on your table at all times or have a box of tissues if you like. It's completely up to you. You're going to spray your paper towel on your table. I would recommend wiping everything that sits on the table as well as the entire table. Sanitize your hands. Go ahead and get bag 2A and 2B out of your kit. For this one, because you do have so many supplies for the second section, I would recommend that you take out your draping supplies and set up your mannequin before you go into your second bag.
are quite a lot of supplies for this step, so just make sure that you give yourself as much room as possible and you organize things as best as you can so that you are not dropping things on the floor and you can have everything out on your table. your hands and step back. You will now perform tweezing and waxing. This section is untimed and you will be individually instructed by the examiner to perform it. They will come up and let you know which section you're going to go ahead and demonstrate for them. So let's assume for this that they have walked up and told me to demonstrate the tweezing step. So I'm going to step up and sanitize my hands. I'm going to put my gloves on. Go ahead and take a cotton round and some antiseptic. Clean the brow. And you can tweeze above or below where you drew your eyebrow on. Then you're going to go ahead and take your tweezers. Your container can stay on the table for right now. Um, when you're finished, you will not put your tweezers back into the container. So it's up to you if you'd like to put this in your tube disinfectant first. Then you're gonna take your tweezers, make sure it looks like you are really bracing the skin and you are tweezing out in the same direction that the hair grows. You really only need to show them one or two tweezers because they will be standing in front of you watching. Then your tweezers are gonna go in your tube disinfectant. Sanitize your hands. You're going to antiseptic again afterwards. Sanitize and step back. At this point, they may tell you to just go ahead and perform the waxing right away, or they may walk away and another examiner will come to you later. Either way, you're just going to wait until they instruct you again. So we'll assume that they instructed me to wax. I'm gonna step up and sanitize again. I'm going to take a cotton round and use my antiseptic. You're going to do the opposite eyebrow that you did for tweezing. Make sure that you dry that brow after you antiseptic. Then you're going to take your wax and a fresh stick, test it on your arm. Then you're going to apply the wax to the mannequin. You can do again above or below. They're just looking for a pretty even application and that you're going from the inner to the outer corner of the eyebrow when you're applying. Then your strip will go on. Make sure it looks like you're bracing and you're going to pull in towards the center. Then you're going to take another cotton round. You can either post wax or antiseptic first, it doesn't matter which one, as long as you do both afterwards. I usually do post wax first. And then antiseptic. If you have any extras or dirty things on your table, please make sure that you dispose of them at that time. Remove your gloves. Sanitize your hands and step back. 
You will now perform the mask step. This will also conclude the facial as well. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section and you'll be informed when you have five minutes remaining. You'll step up, sanitize your hands. You're going to take a spatula and you're going to remove the wax product from its original container into a um, sanitizable or disposable container. I recommend wetting your mask brush so that it does not absorb all the product. And then you're going to apply the mask all over the face. What they're looking for is that you have a pretty even application, that it goes underneath the jawline, that it covers the face, and that it's not in the eyes, the nostrils, or the mouth. My favorite type of brush to use is a denser foundation brush. Whatever brush you choose, I would recommend using a plastic or a metal handle, because if you use a wooden handle, it is considered a one-time use item which is fine as long as you remember to throw it in the trash and not into the to be disinfected container when you're finished. And you don't have to spend a ton of time putting this mask on. It does not need to be perfect, it just needs to cover the face and not be in any of the areas that it shouldn't be. I'll put this in my to be disinfected as well as my container. And then I'm going to use cellulose sponges to remove it. I have a set, two sets in here just in case. Depending on the mask you choose, you may have a little trouble removing it with just one set of sponges. So if you have a second set, it just helps you to be able to get it all off. I recommend using something that they can see. Even if it's colored, that's fine as well. Then you're going to remove the mask. Check underneath their chin to make sure that you've removed it all. You're going to tone. And then you're going to moisturize. Make sure you don't use too much moisturizer because directly after this you're going to be applying makeup and if you put too much moisturizer on your makeup is just going to slide all over their face since they don't have any pores to absorb anything. Sanitize your hands and step back. You will now perform the makeup step. You will have 20 minutes to complete this section and they will inform you when you have 10 minutes remaining. The main thing that they are looking for during this is that you are double bracing when working around the eye and the lip area. What that means is both hands need to be on the mannequin stationary while you are applying things to the eyes or the lips. And I'll show you as I go through. So you'll step up and sanitize. You're going to need a palette as well as the containers for your makeup because you cannot use the makeup out of the original container, otherwise it's contaminated. So I recommend having some little spatulas for your foundation, your lip color. You're going to dispense it onto your palette. Make sure you close them when you're done. I would not discard of them yet, just in case you end up dropping your palette on the floor and spilling everything.
and I don't recommend using makeup brushes during this section because unless they are a metal or plastic candle, you have to dispose of them. And it's just easier if you use disposable items. Brushes tend to not work as well on the mannequins because they don't have real skin. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your makeup sponge. You're going to dot the four quadrants of the face before you start applying any makeup. And then you're going to blend your foundation in. You want to try to choose a color that is as close to the mannequin as possible because they will come around and be looking at their skin for lines of demarcation. That could mean pulling back the headband or looking around the jawline. Then you're going to apply your powder, and it's the same thing. Dot the four quadrants, and then blend it in. I do recommend using a little extra powder on the cheek area, because when you go to put your blush on, if there's too much foundation and not enough powder, you're going to have a really hard time applying your blush to the cheeks. And just make sure when you're working on the mannequin that it doesn't look like you are dragging or pulling. The most frequent time that I see this happening is when people are applying blush to the mannequin. So you'll take your third sponge and apply your blush. I recommend dotting and then blending and when I say I see people dragging, I see them do this when they're doing the blush. Make sure you do not do that. You want to be as gentle as possible with your mannequin. If they're shaking or it looks like you're hurting them, then they're going to assume you're hurting the client. You don't have to have really dark looks on your mannequin. As long as they can see that you've applied the products, that's all that matters. For your eyeshadow, I recommend using a neutral shade. If you want to use something brighter, you can. They're really not looking for a perfect, beautiful application. They're just looking that you're being safe and sanitary. So, when you're working around the eye, make sure that you're double bracing. What that means is I have a hand here and I have a finger here that never moves. You can use the side of your palm. You could use a different finger. It's completely up to you, whatever works best for you. And again, they're not looking for the most perfect application. They just want to see that you're being safe and sanitary. You're going from the inside to the outside. And you can use the same sponge for both eyes. Then you're going to take your eyeliner. You want to have a sharpener just in case your eyeliner does not look like it is brand new so that you are able to sharpen the pencil. And then again, you're going to double brace. Work from the inside to the outside. Then for your mascara, make sure you don't use the original wand. You're going to use a disposable wand. 
You can use one for both sides because you're not actually applying mascara. And just make sure you're double bracing. Go in and apply your mascara. Then you should have a second spoolie. You're going to go ahead and double brace while you groom their eyebrows. Then you're going to apply lip liner. And again, you have to double brace. You can apply the lip liner all over the lips if you want. And then go back in with your lipstick. That's perfectly fine. Then you're going to apply your lip color. Again, make sure you're double bracing. I recommend getting a lip color that is as close to the lip liner as possible. Then at this point, if you want, you're more than welcome to put your makeup into the To Be Disinfected container, as well as your mascara, eyeliner, and lip liner. Your palette's also going to go in there as well. And any extra disposables that you have, I would throw them away. You can also get rid of any product if you want. You don't have to, though. Sanitize your hands and step back. You will now perform a blood spill exposure. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section and they will inform you when you have five minutes remaining. You're going to imagine that the client sustained a cut to the forehead and that you can continue the service, but you do need to address the blood spill. So you'll step up and sanitize your hands. You'll go into your first aid kit. You should have a bag within the first aid kit as well as two sets of everything. So we're gonna go ahead and put our gloves on. You'll get a Band-Aid and an alcohol or antiseptic wipe. I recommend doing it on the side of the forehead because you do still need to microderm them. All of this is going to go into the empty bag that was in your first aid bag. I would use the smallest band-aid you can find, that way it's not in your way. And then everything that is dirty, including the gloves, is going to go into this bag before you throw it away. You're assuming that this is all covered in blood. Throw that in the trash. Your first aid bag is still good for another use, so leave it on the table. Sanitize your hands and step back. You will now perform the microdermabrasion step of this examination. Some states have opted not to include this. That is why it's at the end now. We will be doing this in Arizona. So what you're going to do is they will first give you two minutes to set up the supplies needed for microderm. So what you're going to do is sanitize your hands and then you should have another bag in your box that is just your microdermabrasion supplies. So you'll sanitize and then you can remove all of your supplies from the bag. Sanitize your hands and step back. 
For the microdermabrasion section, you will have 10 minutes, and they will inform you when you have five minutes remaining. You're going to step up and sanitize. First things first, apply, uh, put your gloves on. Then you're going to go ahead and put your eye protection on the mannequin. You can use whatever type of eye protection you want. I just use a tissue with cotton rounds in it. It's easier and I can throw it away when I'm done. Some students opt for a sleeping pad, which is fine, it's just a little bit large. And you can always wet this to help it stick as well. I wouldn't recommend just using cotton rounds because they do fall off too easy. Then we're gonna go ahead and put our eye protection on. If you wear glasses, you don't need to wear different eye protection. And then you're going to put your mask on. I'm gonna leave it off for the purpose of the video so that you are able to hear me, but you do wanna make sure that you put it on. And then it usually has a metal piece at the top that you're going to clamp over your nose. If you clamp it properly, it won't fog up your glasses. Then you're gonna go ahead and take a cotton round with a solution. And you're just going to clean the forehead avoiding the band-aid. Then you're going to dry the area. Your microdermabrasion tip can be one of many things. It does need to at least have a four foot cord on it. However you do that is up to you. Some people choose to use like a plumber's line. I just use a pencil with yarn on it. It works the best for me. And then you're gonna go ahead, brace the skin, and you're going to make hashtags um, or vertical and horizontal movements across the whole forehead. So you'll start like this, and then switch, and go this way. And you can take your time with this. You have 10 minutes to complete this section, so you don't have to feel like you're being rushed through it. And this will go into the to be disinfected. You're going to take another cotton round and brush off the crystals from the mannequin's forehead. Then you're going to go ahead and tone. This is not required, but like I said, I do this after every step just so that I don't forget. Remove their iPad, remove your gloves. Remove your goggles, put them in the chili disinfectant, sanitize your hands, and step back. You will now perform the eyelash enhancement section. They will give you two minutes to set up the supplies for this section. During that time, you're going to sanitize your hands, go into your kit. At this point, you should have your last bag, and this will include all of the supplies needed for eyelashes. You should have your eyelashes, the glue, a mascara wand, and your stork scissors in a container. They cannot just be out because they are sharp. You'll just lay this out on your table, sanitize your hands, and step back. You will now perform the eyelash enhancement section of this exam. You will have 10 minutes and they will inform you when you have five remaining. You'll step up and sanitize. Take your mascara wand and double bracing, you're going to clean the lashes on both eyes. Then you're going to take your lash and your scissors, which need to be in a closed container. You're going to double brace and measure the eye. Trim the lash. And then apply your glue. Double bracing. You're going to apply the lash to the lash line. 
And you'll do this on both eyes. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you the one eye. Just make sure when you are finished that you dispose of all of your supplies that are disposable. Your glue and your scissors will go into the to be disinfected. You'll sanitize your hands and step back. This will conclude the examination and they will give you instructions on cleaning up and leaving. At that point, you are done being graded. Thank you.